right guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, gorgeous spring day here in the end times in the paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico. And uh, so it is, we have somehow made it into Friday, May 12th, 2017. So Friday is the day I bring you my weekly ecological meltdown roundup ramp where I simply open up my email box for more than for the laundry list of, of reasons why and evidence of this planet heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour with no help from Donald Trump. You know, I've been dividing this this rant into the Donald Trump portion and the non-Donald Trump portion, but, but I'm so sick and tired of this egregious motherfucker. And I pretty much, at the end of my dump the Trump the hive roundup rant, I kind of did the uh, the Donald Trump taking down how Donald Trump and his band of horsemen have been working overtime to uh, take this planet into a brick wall at 77,000 miles an hour during the past week. So I might have a couple of uh, I might brush up against Donald Trump. Oh my God, the thought of brushing up against Donald Trump. I mean, what would it take to get the slime off of you? Anyway, so we're going to try the best I can to keep that fat ass, uh, ecocidal, egomaniac, planet eater in chief out of this rant because we don't even need Donald Trump. Although he's certainly uh, the, the engineer on the runaway freight train. We don't even need an engineer on this runaway freight train to take this planet into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. And I'm going to let the little dog go get his rat. Whatever. And we're going to dive into my email box. And uh, let's start out here in the, the mainstream media with those... Uh, with those eco Nazis over at uh, at the Washington Post. Oh shit! I have I've got to get my uh, for this opening story. I need I need both my bullshit detector and my no shit Sherlock button. This is one of those stories. The opening story on on uh, <laughs> on the Washington Post. On the Washington Post uh, environmental roundup, uh, I need to get both of these. Okay, take it away, Washington Post, and tell us why we are so fucked. And this would be their leadoff story: Earth could could break through a major climate threshold in the next 15 years, scientists warn. Global temperatures could exceed, according to a new scientific study, global temperatures could exceed one and a half degrees Celsius above their pre-industrial levels within the next 15 years. Uh, guys, to the degree, yes, to the degree that the next 15 minutes, that the next 15 minutes is you know, within the next 15 years, uh, this is a, a, a no shit Sherlock statement. Uh, but, but any clueless fucking moron I left on this planet thinking it's going to be 15 years b before we cross that unadulterated horseshit, one and a half degree, that is going to take 15 years for this planet to get to one and a half degree Celsius, pull your head out of your 
ass. Anyway, I, I, I don't think anyone on Humpty Dumpty Tribe uh, is suffering any fucking delusion about that one. Okay, what else we got? Of course, 99% of the post story is about Donald Trump. And either it's either Donald Trump or Scott Pruitt. Now, uh, these next stories, you can, you can make your own Donald Trump connection. Uh, I'm gonna put these together. Uh, U.S. blocks. Did you realize there a, a, a an environmental regulatory agency in the Trump administration? Not the EPA. I can't remember the name of this uh, uh, of this uh, department still surviving. Uh, U.S. blocks major pipeline after 18 leaks and a 2 million gallon drilling mud spill. This is the $4.2 billion rover gas pipeline. Uh, ordered, okay, you're done, at least for now, uh, is being built by the same company that built the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline. You know, the, that energy transfers. Um, as the, these, this pipeline, I guess, I guess this big spill was in Ohio. Uh, now, along with that, where is this? Uh, I anyway, I, I don't even know where the uh, where the story is, but uh, uh, I I anyway, the story is all over the mainstream media. I'm going to talk about this in my clueless moron roundup rant. Of v many versions, I just can't find it here at the moment. Is it, you do realize that the Dakota Access Pipeline has already had an oil spill. Uh, I, I think it, it actually had an oil spill before they even opened up the very last leg, right before they were ready to open up, you know, that last leg of the oil spill. Well, I, I, be, before day one, they already had an oil spill on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, the Washington Post and everyone else covering that. Okay, enough about oil spill. I'm going to talk about these more in uh, on Monday's economic meltdown roundup rant. Now, there are many versions of this story too. There actually is some good news. Believe it. I mean, all kidding aside, as Senate unexpectedly rejects bid to repeal key environmental. Regulation. So this is, uh, you know, talking about Barack Obama's tiny, tiny little, for all you barefoot uh, foot uh, fetishes, you know, Barack Obama, you know, for his own environmental legacy, made this tiny little effort to make make the most futile attempt to rein in these methane emissions from all of these goddamn uh, thousands of fracking sites all over this country. And then, of course, Trump uh, immediately came in and tried to undo them. And, and hallelujah, uh, <clears throat> it failed. Who was it? it? It failed 51 to 49. 51 to 49. So it was John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and some... Oh, who was the third senator? But it's uh, some woman I can't remember from up there in New England joining the Democrats and telling Donald Trump to go fuck himself. That you're out of control. 
And, uh, and, and of course, what this is a, a subtle indication that we have this 5149 that uh, now three Republicans joining the Democrats that uh, it's time for this motherfucker to go. Let's hope what this is a sign of. Um, more and more of this shit about the, uh, the Paris Climate Agreement. Jesus. <clears throat> all right. Quote, We all knew this was coming. Alaska's thawing soils are now pouring carbon dioxide into the air, and, and, and not to mention uh, methane. <clears throat> New research reinforces fears. I love that. New research reinforces fears about emissions of greenhouse gases from permafrost, from the melting permafrost. And then, uh, anyway, a bunch of stories about this jackass Scott Pruitt over there at EPA. I'm not even going to insult my intelligence or yours anymore talking about that fucking jackass Scott Pruitt. Let's flip over from uh, from the mainstream media to the alternative media here at Alternet. Uh, again, I'm going to skip, if that's possible, skip the Donald Trump stories. How Big Pharma <clears throat> is making huge profits from torturing and killing horses. There you go. I love it when they ask a question in a headline. Can anyone cook up a worse idea for UN climate talks than giving the fossil fuel industry a front row seat. Anybody who does not understand how the fossil fuel industry is the one with the front row seat at these unadulterated horseshit UN climate talks pull your head out of your ass. It is the fossil fuel industry with the United Nations in its pocket, not necessarily with the IPCC in its pocket, with the policy makers just blatantly ignoring the already way too conservative conclusions of the IPCC. I need to move along. I uh, already hit the bullshit detector button on uh, how the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, resistance is coming back. Let's see. A swath of states is already experiencing the hottest year to date from New Mexico, from New Mexico, where the high was 55 degrees two days ago, over to Florida and up to Ohio, 2017 has been the hottest year on record. Uh, again, but I, of course, although it was 55 two days ago here in New Mexico, I do remember it being in the 80s in February, as, as all of the locals here have never seen anything like 2017. All right, more stuff about uh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Okay. <clears throat> Forest Service ready to approve controversial Arizona copper mine threatening, threatening the environment and 
the and endangered species, the giant open pit copper mine will dig up 90,000 tons of ore daily, producing for every 90,000 tons of, cop of copper, they will be producing 1.25 billion tons of waste every single day. And the, uh, the U.S. Forest Service, this is on our public lands in a, in a forest, in a U.S. national forest in uh, Arizona as Donald Trump uh, turns our national forest into open pit minings, mines. Okay. How fracking violates human rights and the inherent rights of natural systems and species. Here is eating insects, eating insects and fake meat would cut the devastating environmental impact of livestock. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, I'm not going to get in on another rant about eating bugs to survive the end times. All right, let's move over to the Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth newsletter today. They start off with some rare good news. One million acres in California saved from oil drilling and fracking. We're celebrating an important victory this week in California as this lawsuit that I've been talking about recently by the Center and Allies has just stopped well, for now anyway, has just stopped <clears throat> the Trump administration <coughs> from opening more than one million acres of public land in California to drilling and fracking. For now. All right. Uh, anyway, this is pretty much all about uh, about Donald Trump and then uh, this is their story about the Forest Service on the verge of the Rosemont mining decision. The uh, project would blast a mile, a one mile wide, 3,000 foot deep pit in the Santa Rita Mountains and bury thousands of acres of public land in billions of tons of toxic waste. The mine lies squarely in jaguar critical habitat. Quote from the center's Randy Seraglio, quote, no rational analysis could lead the stewards of our public lands to conclude that this devastating project is acceptable. Anybody on any level uh, who would call the U.S. Forest Service under Donald Trump stewards of our public land, even ironically, got one thing to tell you. The U.S. Forest Service is perhaps the single biggest threat to the national forest system. It is a bigger threat than open pit mining and pine bark beetles. Anyone not understanding the single biggest threat to the U.S. forest system, it is the U.S. Forest Service. Okay, finally, uh, 
we, we see overpopulation talked about in, by an environmental organization, the Center for Biological Diversity uh, being one of the tiny handfuls of environmental organizations uh, talking about the single number one environmental uh, problem on the planet. According to the newest census, U.S. population has now topped 325 million. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, our country's population just surpassed 325 million and is currently increasing by one person every 14 seconds. Over the past 50 years, while our country grew in human population by more than 100 million, wildlife populations have been cut in half. Oh, shit. Anybody <clears throat> who does not understand why the United States is the single most overpopulated country on planet Earth. I don't have time to get into it. All these people talking about them sub-Saharan Africans need to be sterilized. <clears throat> Moving on. I ain't going to get into that. Uh, <laughs> Moving on. Let's move on to ocean plastic pollution in California as well as uh, every other uh, ocean on the planet. Uh, San Francisco Bay and at least three other California coastline areas suffer severe plastic pollution that violates the Federal Clean Water Act. Oh, shit. Yes, this is, for anyone who doesn't uh, understand this, uh, Californians are literally swimming in plastic. All right, but let's go over to my favorite ecological meltdown roundup rant site. Of them all, Manga Bay. Manga Bay, uh, and it seems like, I think they might mention Donald Trump, but it seems like even more than usual, uh, Manga Bay as the number one, uh, the number one ringleader against palm oil, and the heavily weighted as it should be, to uh, for anybody who does not understand why palm oil, why palm oil is one of the number one biggest threats to planet Earth. Uh, Manga Bay, story after story after story, trying to explain this to you, including their lead-off story. <clears throat> Killed, forced, and afraid, Philippine palm oil legacy incites new fears. Yes, uh talking about how these uh, all of the government in the in the palm of the palm oil corporations has touted palm oil propagation as a way to elevate the national economy and even stem armed conflict. <laughs> But industry watchdog groups disagree, saying palm oil's track record of conflict in the Philippines does not bode well for the future. And as uh, long as we're over there in the Philippines, they have already mentioned this story uh, about 
the rise and fall of Regina Lopez, the Philippines maverick environment minister. This is about this woman who is actually somehow uh, just unbelievably uh, made it to uh, <clears throat> to being appointed as envir a, a real live environmentalist being appointed as the head of the Philippines Department of Environment and Natural Resources, well, she lasted 10 months. She lasted 10 months as on May 3rd, Lopez was removed from her post. Do you think so? Uh, the committee uh, sacking her included politicians with ties to the mining sector. Yes, and an Air Force chief has been appointed to replace her. There you go. Let's go from the Philippines to Sub-Saharan Africa. Let's go over to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where we see the latest giraffe census standing at 46 giraffes. 46. All now herded into Garamba National Park, which is situated in a dangerous part of Africa, crawling with heavily armed poachers and various guerrilla groups, that is G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. Oh God, kiss goodbye the giraffes and the gorillas in sub-Saharan Africa. 46 giraffes to go. Hmm, how about this? Indigenous groups and environmental activists risk arrest to block logging in Malaysia. Well, a risk arrest my ass. Uh, they they are risk getting the goddamn bullet through their heads, which is uh, exactly. Uh, what they're going to get as these uh, tree huggers down there uh, and this is in Kelantan has seen more forest clearing in recent years as the state ramps up tree plantation development meaning palm oil and rubber uh, Activist groups say forestry departments are granting forest access to logging companies. Wow! Anyway, moving on to that. Let's see. Uh, palm oil firm pledges to stop deforesting after this, uh, anyway, uh, let's, this is Good Hope Asia Holdings is the largest palm oil company yet to promise to purge its operations of deforestation, peatland conversion, and human rights abuses. Uh, announcing such commitments and implementing them are two different matters, despite the growing prevalence of such pledges. These deforestation pledges, no, as in not one major user or processor of palm oil can say it is actually eliminated deforestation from its supply chain. 
Yes. Then we go over there from palm oil to ivory smuggling. As Hong Kong ivory traders encouraging buyers to smuggle the ivory to mainland China. Uh, some shopkeepers are, sugge are suggesting hiding I ivory trinkets and bags and, lu and luggage. There you go. Let's see. Oh, well, I should. I'm sorry. They, I don't know why they put that story uh, between these two stories. Then they go back to these uh, unadulterated, uh, no deforestation commitments. Uh, just uh, once again, if you didn't understand it uh, in the in the last story, I guess it bears repeating, uh, one inch away, numerous companies involved in the global palm oil supply chain, from producers and traders to consumer companies that use the commodity in their products, have adopted zero deforestation commitments, but pledging to a pledging to address the deforestation and human rights abuses associated with palm oil is one thing while making those commitments a reality on the ground is another. Do you think so? Then they go over there from Southeast Asia to Liberia in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, where palm oil companies have signed a, a series of large contracts to develop plantations in Liberia. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, God, and I just, I'm just skipping ahead, guys. Uh, here we go. How about get out the no shit? Sherlock, button again, protected species in Gulf of Mexico could take decades to recover from Deepwater Horizon oil spill. The, the oil spill just immediately killed thousands of marine mammals and sea turtles and everything else in the Gulf. Uh, but for anyone who thinks uh, that was it, uh, pull your head out of your ass, quoting this new study by the good old National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration study, quote, the research indicates that populations of several marine mammal and sea turtle species will take decades to rebound and significant habitat restoration in the region will also be needed. Yes, as, as Donald Trump following uh, following Barack Obama's lead is opening up more of the the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this is one uh, where Donald Trump didn't even uh, need to do it because Barack Obama, who was uh, you know it was under on his watch that this happened, and what did Barack Obama do in response to the biggest oil spill in U.S. history on his watch? He opened up more of the Gulf of Mexico to deep water oil drilling than any president in history. I don't even think Donald Trump had any, anything left at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico to open up. To oil drilling by the time uh, Barack Obama got finished cementing his own environmental legacy down there. Let's see. C 
coal miners owe the Indonesian government hundreds of millions of dollars. Oops. I guess I've burned out the batteries of the No Shit Sherlock button once again. Uh, this is talking about the number of permits for coal mines issued has exploded in Indonesia. A countrywide investigation into Indonesia's mining sector revealed that 2,000 522 mining permits do not fulfill clean and clear standards. No shit, Sherlock. And investigations have revealed the government is still owed $380 million from those mining royalties, which they will never see because collecting the remaining arrears proves challenging. Do you think so? Here is... Let's go over there to Madagascar, see what's, what happens to anybody going up against the rosewood loggers in Madagascar. Anti rosewood trafficking activist being held without trial in Madagascar. Clovis Rasmafala, uh, let's see, when was he arrested? He started going up against these fuckers back in 2009. He has now been sitting in a Madagascar prison since September on charges of unauthorized rebellion. Unauthorized rebellion. I wonder what an authorized rebellion looks like in Madagascar. So I guess if, if his rebellion was just authorized by the Department of Rebellions in uh, Madagascar, this man would not have been sitting in prison since September, but he could have been, it's been shot on sight. Oh, Jesus. Wow! How about this story, which, uh, as, well, I've already burned out the batteries of the No Shit Sherlock button. <clears throat> New report details enormous illegal logging and corruption along the Vietnam-Cambodia border. Do you think so? Mm. As they've, so far, they've uncovered $13 million in kickbacks from these illegal logging companies to these uh, forestry authorities over there in Vietnam and Cambodia. So, you know, it's right along the border, so you can just, you know, they can do this thing. Uh, the, the forest officials can just point to the other side as they stick $13 million in their pockets. Wow, and next to that story, hmm, study finds hundreds of thousands of tropical species at risk of extinction due to deforestation. No shit, Sherlock. Let's just, let's just, uh, wind up here for, for anybody who does not understand why we are so fucked. Let's just read the uh, opening to this story because I realize I'm talking to myself. Spend a little time here. <clears throat> Scientists have long believed that the rate at which we are destroying tropical forests and the habitat those forests represent 
could drive a global mass extinction event. But the extent of the potential losses has never been fully understood. So this is John Alroy, a professor of biological sciences at Australia's Macquarie University, examined local scale ecological data in order to forecast potential global extinction rates and found at the end of his research that hundreds of thousands